الله أكبر الله أكبر إن الحمد لله حمدا خالدا مع خلوده لا منتهى له دون علمه هو الولي الحميد أهل الثناء والمجد أحق ما قال العبد وكلنا له عباد نحمده تعالى كما حمد نفسه بنفسه ليس كمثله شيء في حمده هو الولي الحميد له الحمد على الرضا وله الحمد حتى يرضى وله الحمد على حمدنا إياه نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه أدى الأمانة ونصح لهذه الأمة فتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك عباد الله Dear servants of Allah Dear slaves of Allah Fear Allah be conscious of Allah. Put your faith and your hope in Allah. Ibad Allah, ittaqu Allah fi arhamikum. Ibad Allah, ittaqu Allah fi atfalikum. Ibad Allah, ittaqu Allah. Wa'alamu anna al-aqibata lil-muttaqeen. Ittaqu Allah. Wa'alamu anna liman yattaqi Allah yaj'al lahu makhraja. مخرجا من كل ضيق وهم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. الله عز وجل in his words and the best words are the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. He says, O you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from the raging blazing fire. Protect yourselves and your families, your children, your loved ones from the blazing fire. Be cautious of Allah when you are dealing with them from the raging blazing fire. These are the words of Allah. The greatest words are the words of Allah. Words that cannot be mimicked or duplicated. The most profound words. And the best of examples is the example of Rasulullah. Muhammad salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayh Abu al-Qasim He was the beacon of light for all of mankind a guide to take all of mankind out of the darkness into the guidance an example of the best etiquette an example of the best creation Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In the worst of matters, the most evil of matters, the most dangerous and destructive of all the matters are the fabrications and alterations that people of misguidance try to embed within this deen. These are called bid'ah. They strand from nothing more than opinion and cultural practice. They have no root within the Quran or the Sunnah. These deviations will lead you astray and they will lead you down a deep dark path of misguidance and that path eventually leads to hellfire in which we seek Allah's protection from a question for myself then all of you did you ever stop to reflect on your relationships with those who you love those who are closest to you your mother, 
your father, your wife, your husband, your brother, your sister, your daughter, your son. Those individuals who make up your immediate family. Your relationship to these people is vital and critical. And if you don't reflect on it now, you will soon reflect when they leave or you leave in a sense. A few days ago, it dawned on me to reflect, how is my relationship with my son? How is my relationship with my sister? And I understood that within the Islamic teaching, that they, the immediate family, have a right over me. وَإِنَّ لِأَهْلِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقٍّ وَإِنَّ لِأَهْلِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقٍّ فَاعْطِ كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍّ حَقَّهِ وَهَذَا قَوْلُ سَلْمَانَ رضي الله عنه أرضاه لأبي الدرداء When Salman entered Medina, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم enjoined with him and Abi Darda to be brethren. And Salman noticed how Abi Darda was so obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He spent the majority of his days and nights in ibadah. However, he neglected his relationship with his own family. He neglected the relationship with his own guest. So he said these words to Abi Darda. He says, Verily, your family have a right over you. Everyone has a right over you. So give them their due right. And when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard these words, he said, Sadaqa Salman. He agreed with Salman's words. So these are words of guidance that we take. So when I say that your immediate family has a right over you, the most bare of essential right is that you uphold your relationship with them in good conduct. The most basic of rights that you can give them is to be good and kind to them. It's to give them some time. And this speaks volumes. This could change a person's life if you give them the necessary time and you treat them with kindness. But we're all guilty. I myself included. We are all guilty. When we are soaring high and we have established an understanding and we see and we understand something which is beneficial, we want to share that with our family. Those who are closest to us are first. We want our son, our daughter, our mother, our father to be the best, to experience what we experience, to see what we see, to feel what we feel. But we come off as harsh and abrupt. Just because you understand the deen does not mean you can force that understanding upon those who you love. You have the best of intentions. However, your method is flawed. And when you're trying to push the guidance upon your children, upon your mother, upon your father or brother, what you are doing is you're repelling them away. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He addresses the best of all of mankind. The best of all creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And He says to him, وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And lower your wings. Now, if you just picture it and imagine it, an eagle soaring way up high, a massive wingspan, a demonstration of awe and power and might and ability. When you understand the guidance of Islam, you're soaring. Your wings are open. If you greet your family with those open wings, you will shock them. You will frighten them. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
fold your wings. Shelter the believers. Comfort them. Shade them. And you've seen when the bird opens his wings, it's a demonstration of power, of might. So the, the opponent or the other animal is frightened. When you come home and you're yelling at your family, you can't watch that, you can't say that, you can't wear that. You're demonstrating a power that is repelling. Fold your wings, shelter, comfort your family members. And then he says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi ayatin ukhra. Fabima rahmatim min Allahi lin talahum. It is by the mercy of Allah that you are lenient toward them. And he's addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his relationship with who? The Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhim. The most blessed of all people. It is the mercy of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted this exemplary, the best of etiquette to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he dealt with the companions. And then he says, Subhanahu wa jalla fi ulah, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْكَ And if you were harsh and cold, they would have fled from you. If you were abrupt and abrasive, if your heart was hard, you were not lenient, they would have fled from you. Fa'fu, fa'fu anhum wastawfir lahum. Pardon them. And ask Allah to forgive them, make dua for them. Wallahi, it's as if though Allah Azza wa is addressing you and how you deal with your family members. Did you ever think to overlook the mistakes of your sister? Did you ever think to overlook the mistakes of your son or daughter? What we do is the opposite. We point at the mistake. You're this and that. Overlook, he says, overlook. Afu. Pardon it. Excuse it. Wastaghfir lahum. And ask Allah to forgive them. And the, and the one point I want to focus on is the last one. Now, again, this is between Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wahyun yuha. He is divine decree. Al Mustafa. Allah chose him to be the seal of all the prophets. He's asking him to what? To consult with the companions. To consult with them. This consultation is between Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba. Min al mufassirun man qal Umar wa Abi Bakr al Siddiq radiallahu anhuma. Wa min al mufassirun from the mufassirun that stipulate, they say this is specific to the consultation between Umar and Abi Bakr and Rasulullah. Others said, wa rajih, is that it is between all the Sahaba. Now I ask you by Allah, were all the Sahaba the same? They differed in opinion, they differed in etiquette, they differed in preference, they differed in practice. Walakin Rasulullah was commanded to consult them. Are you understanding the, the severity, the, the implication? In this, if you read the tafsir, the consultation is not in umur qat'iya. It is not in umur that is closed. It is in the umur that is allowable. There's room. However, despite of this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba used to obey him sam'an wa ta'a. If he sat, they would sit. If he stood, they would stand. If he walked, they would walk. And upon this, he was guided to consult with them, to seek their consultation in these matters. 
Now, on Abi Ishaq, he says, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ أَيْ لِتُرِيهِمْ أَنَّكَ تَسْمِعْ مِنْهُمْ وَتَسْتَعِينَ بِهِمْ وَإِنْ كُنْتَ عَنْهُمْ غَنِيَّةً It is a demonstration that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an option that he is giving to the Sahaba to show them that he needs them, that their opinion actually matters, it has value. So he opens the door of discussion on certain matters to gauge their understanding, to gauge their view in that which is mubah, of course. Example, and we'll put it into practical sense. When was the last time you asked your son or daughter, where do you want to eat? Now we know that you're going to eat halal. This is not a question. What do you prefer to eat? Where do you prefer to go? To this park or that park? To this mall or that mall? What kind of clothing did you prefer? Obviously it's halal. But there's, you're building a bridge, you're building a bond by asking, consulting. You can't even name a single team that your son or daughter follows. A basketball team or, or their favorite player. But you want them to name all the Sahaba and all their wives and children. There is no give and take here. You're forcing. You're pushing and they're pulling away. And this is something we all need to sit down and realize and reflect on. How is my relationship with those who I love? And in matters that are concrete, that are set, Allah Azza wa Jal advised Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. He says in Surah Taha, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Here he says, and command your family, command them to pray, to uphold the salah, if it is applicable to them. And then he didn't say, وَغْلِظْ عَلَيْهِمْ and be firm on them, and yell at them. He says, وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا and be patient with it. Be patient with the salah. Be patient in how you call them to salah. Be patient with them in terms of when it comes to salah. Your mom or daughter, your son or brother doesn't pray, but you're yelling at them. You don't pray. You're this. You're going here. Where is your patience? And it starts from, doesn't, you don't have to call them to prayer directly. Especially when you're dealing with children. You have to call them to the proper intention first. The intention, what is salah? Who am I praying to? Then the proper way to make wudu. Then the proper way to make adhan. Then the proper way to make iqama. Then the proper way to stand for salah. There's a procedure. Not ya walad ta'al salli. Hey boy, come here and pray. It's time to pray, hurry up. We're all guilty of this. Or that distant relative that comes once a year and you look down upon them because they don't pray and you make them feel so worthless. Astabir alayha. Be patient. Akhulu ma tasma'un wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum min kulli dhamb. Astaghfiruhu. إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله عباد الله اعلموا أني أحبكم في الله وأسأل الله أن يحشرني وإياكم في ظل عرشه يوم لا ظل إلا ظله وبعد Indeed Allah عز وجل he created the best example in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا The best example. And communication and consult with those who we love is critical. It is essential, essential for the well-being of all of society. Not just your household, your neighborhood, your city, your town, the country all of humanity we need to consult one another we need to gauge where we are at and you have to understand 
that those who you love and those who are closer to you have a right over you. And it is your right as a Muslim to uphold that right. You have to give them the time and the necessary care. Which brings my focus now to the atrocity that occurred a few days ago in the elementary school in the state of Texas. When I heard that news, my heart dropped. And all I could think of was my children and your children and those children. And I started to reflect, how could this happen? Like, in what sense could this happen? And it, it's been an occurrence. Almost, it's an expected occurrence. You, you kind of understood it because it happened in the United States of America and it happened in Texas. Two teachers and 19 elementary students died, murdered in cold blood. They went to school to get an education. They ended up leaving dead. Where is the education? Is my question. And where is the understanding? Where is the understanding as to what kind of person would do such a thing? What was this individual, 18 or 19 years of age, thinking? There is two critical solutions that must be implicated, that, that must be applied immediately. And this is specific to, to United States of America and even in Canada. There's more guns in America than there are people. There's about 120 guns, firearms, for every 100 people. Now guns are not the weapon. Guns are tools of, of, of a skilled trade. Okay, they're tools of a skilled trade are properly used and trained upon. They're not a God-given right that you can just go and pick one up. Not all of you have a miter saw or a skill saw or a jackhammer because that's a skilled trade tool. You have to know what you're doing with it. But all of you have a lawnmower. That's what it is like in the States. A gun is like a lawnmower. Everybody's got one. If not 10. The unregistered accounts, they say that there's 10 guns for every individual in America. That is way too much arsenal, way too much guns. So what ends up happening is those guns end up in the wrong hands. So there must be a regulation. They must implement something to hold back the number of guns. Because if you have that many guns circulating, they will eventually, inevitably land in the wrong hands. That's the first solution. And I stand for that. On the member of Rasulullah it must be regulated heavily. The second solution is the one I've been referencing this whole khutbah. It's communication. When this atrocity happened, who, who do you blame? You blame the parents, the city, the neighborhood, the government. You blame yourself. All of humanity shares in this. And specifically the Muslims. Because we have a gift of guidance. And I ask you by Allah, and it's a rhetorical question, you guys all know the answer. Could have this young man, an 18 or 19 year old man, could have his course of his life been changed by Islam? Would a Muslim do such an act? You all know the answer. The solution is Islam. The solution is communication. The solution is you reaching out to those who you love. And those other people reaching out to those who they love. And we communicate with each other to prevent disasters such as this. It is your, your due right. It is a responsibility upon you to share the message of Islam. These people, they are in desperate, dire need of this guidance that you are in. 
and you're holding back and you're trying to force it, call to Allah's guidance bil hikmah with wisdom, with kindness. I ask and I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who call to that which is righteous and uphold it. And I ask and I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who see the falsehood and abstain from it. I ask and I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uphold us and to make us firm upon the guidance. Allahumma ja'al jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma. Allahumma ja'al jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات رحمك اللهم بالأطفال اليتامى والنساء الثكالى والشباب الحيارى اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين رحمك اللهم بنا وبالمؤمنين أجمعين يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك وأنعم على النبي المصطفى على الرسول المجتبى وعن آله وأصحابه ونهتدى بهديه وسلم بسنته إلى يوم الدين وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وقم الصلاة